There's a really cool jacket behind me with a really unique cowl type of crossover neckline with pleats and asymmetrical zipper. Super proud of this make. The best that it's made with neat fabric, so it's super comfortable to wear. I'm sharing all the details. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and I'm back at jacket sewing. It's something that I really love doing. If I could sew a jacket every week, I would be very happy. They are just very enjoyable to make and really make sewing worth it for me when you compare the cost to what a jacket like this could cost and how better this is than what you could buy. <laughs> So this is the Alba jacket from Sinclair Patterns and I made it a little while ago back on Patreon for a monthly sew along. So I filmed all the step by step in a lot of detail but I hadn't shared it on the channel yet. This is a summary you'll see today. And this is the type of project that I'm not going to tell you. It's super easy. You'll get it done in one afternoon for sure. It's not. I would say it's an intermediate sew. Not because there's difficult sewing steps in there. It's just because there are a lot of asymmetric pieces that you cut only once. There are just a lot of steps. Short little seams. They are pretty much a lot of straight seams. It's just that there's many of them more than what you would typically sew when you're making a quick t-shirt or, or a quick dress made out of neat fabric so this is not your one hour project but that doesn't mean it's less enjoyable I think it's more enjoyable because it just makes you calm down slow down follow the steps just concentrate and then feel really happy about having such a project already made up and that you've actually made it yourself I think that's always amazing and the Alba jacket totally fits that type of sewing, slower sewing, just careful sewing. And you know, it's a really, really nice design. As you can see on the line art here, you can see asymmetry right away because the front pieces are different. There is a zipper going all the way from the collar, including the hemband, but it doesn't go up and down in the center. It goes diagonal. And the collar here is really interesting. It's described as a type of cow neckline with pleats. It crosses over each other. It's very pretty to look at. I find it extremely beautiful. Something that you don't see all the time and something that's definitely worth the time it takes to put it all together and get it into your jacket. So pretty. That cowl neckline has an outer layer and an inner layer that makes it lined. There's also small shoulder yokes here and on one side the zipper comes only up to there underneath the shoulder yoke. There are just simple long sleeves and cuffs. At the bottom it's finished with hembands front and back and the type of pockets that you have on the side seams are really really easy to sew in so easy and the pocket bag is actually sewn on the inside onto the jacket itself so there's nothing moving or dangling or causing extra bulk inside the jacket because of the asymmetry that you see on the front you'll see that there's a smaller front piece and a larger front piece on the smaller front piece there's an extension with facings and the zipper is sandwiched in between there and on the other side it isn't so Super fun. I really, really enjoy these features when I see them on patterns. It's been drafted for medium to heavyweight knit fabrics. You cannot make this jacket in a woven fabric. You need a knit that will stretch 20 to 30% horizontally. It's not much, but you do need that stretch there. You also do need some vertical stretch. 10 to 20% so that your armhole and your chest, all this area fits really well. Fabrics that could work are sweatshirt fleece, heavier cotton lycra, heavier French terry if it stretches in the right amount. Just be careful that some French terry doesn't have spandex and it just doesn't stretch. Athletic knits, that's always a good bet and that's the one I've chosen. I have decided to sew some areas of the jacket in a solid and others in a print. The important thing is that when you're mixing fabrics like that, that they be the same type and the same weight. It's always going to give you a a better result if you do that. Also, if you head over to Sinclair Patterns website and look at the listing photos, you'll see a lot of examples of fabrics that the testers used when this pattern was created. And there's so many nice fabrics there, some that have texture, they're so pretty. I got a lot of inspiration from there. Every week on Monday, Sinclair Patterns puts on their website a few patterns on special that are 20% off. And the Alba jacket is one of those patterns this week, 20% off through Sunday night. So have a look. The other pattern that's also on sale this week that I've already made and shown on the channel is the Metra Pull-On Jeans. 
I have a really good video about it, shows you everything about those jeans and how to put them together. So you might want to get that pattern for yourself and I already have the resource for the sewing here on the channel for you. And the other pattern that's on sale I really want to make, I hope I have time, is the Gemma top. It's a type of style for cooler weather, it's a long sleeve top and that neckline, I'll show you a photo here, it's so beautiful, it's crossed over and it has a V here on the side with buttons, I really love that, I think it's really pretty to look at. Again, it has a bit of asymmetry which I always love so I hope I can get around to it I will leave you all those links down below if you purchase patterns using my affiliate link you don't pay anything extra it just means that part of that sale comes back to me as commission and I always welcome that of course it helps support the work that I do here on the channel the sizing is really good from 0 to 30 US that will go up to a 62 inch hip I believe and there's also height files like every other pattern choose that one first whether you're petite regular and tall it's always going to give you a much better fit and then choose your size based on the size chart. This style is semi-fitted at the bust and hips so you're not going to have much positive ease at the bust. Around an inch then at the waist because it's more of a straight fit you have about seven to eight inches of ease there and at the bottom it will reach the full hip and the hemband is going to bring it closer to the body so you have about 10% of negative ease there at the hips because of the hemband. Now about the sewing I'm going to tell you a few things. You need to make a choice at the very start how you are going to cut your pattern pieces whether you're going to put your pattern pieces on the fabric wrong sides up or you are going to place all your pattern pieces with the fabric right sides up. The instructions are based on the fabric being right sides up and that's the way I cut mine and that's the way you see the instructions, that's the way you see my video sewn. So I suggest you do it like that. When you cut everything with right sides up you're going to end up with the zipper here on your left shoulder and the piece of the cow here all on the left side of you. If you cut everything the other way with the fabric wrong sides up, you end up with everything on this side. So it's up to you if you want to switch your brain and try to follow the instructions on the inverse and you really want your zipper to be here, then do that, but I suggest you don't. <laughs> I suggest you cut everything with the fabric right sides up and that is something you need to figure out immediately before you start doing anything. There is one page in the instructions that has Everything with colors, every little piece has a separate color and I think it's super helpful to print that out. I think the instructions are amazing. The photographs are really clear. There's a white background. You can see exactly every single step. And also Oksana has taken pictures and used contrast fabric for separate areas so that you really know what's going on. Also in the instructions, you will see a mix of seam allowances, depends on the area of the garment that you're sewing. Some of them are a quarter of an inch, some of them are three eighths of an inch, so it's really important to pay attention to that. But I have sort of put that on the screen every time you see me sewing, just to give you a little hand. So what you'll see in Up Close and Sew Personal are all the pattern pieces, the interfacing, how to assemble this cow type of neckline. It'll include sewing the hem bands partially. And then the most important thing of all is putting these facing pieces together and then putting that zipper in. So that is what you're going to see. It's really fun sewing to see, so let's hop into it. You can see the main pieces that I've cut out of my main fabric. There are plenty of asymmetric pieces that you cut only once. That is the back there, that's pretty simple, it's just cut on the fold. There you can see the band that's going to go at the bottom of the back. These are two band pieces that are going to go on the bottom of both fronts, so I have two pieces there. And you can see that the front is made out of two pieces that are not the same, they are asymmetric. This is the front top panel right there, this is the front bottom panel and you can see I've pinned a paper with the name onto the actual pattern because in the instructions you're going to see all these pattern pieces named as they are and it's really hard to remember what all of them are actually called when you have so many pieces. These asymmetric ones, I think you can't get confused and I've stuck a paper with their names on them. The sleeve is normal, the cuff is normal and I've got a whole lot of other pieces that I've cut out of a navy that's going to match this. Here are all the rest of the pattern pieces. You can see that they are mainly cut out of navy and it will match my main fabric. This white piece here that's cut on the fold is the cowl neckline. 
This is the one that you'll see on the outside that will have the pleats. That's why it's much wider than the lining piece that's underneath. On the edge over there, maybe you see some colorful thread. That's the way I have marked my lines to do my pleats there on the cowl. This tiny piece, it will be a binding that will be inside the neckline on the inside of the jacket. This piece here is the front bottom panel extension. And this one is sort of part of the front on the side of the front that was smaller than the other. This will be seen on the outside once the zipper is not zipped up. That's why I didn't cut this out of the main fabric. These two pieces are the facing pieces and they'll go on the inside of the jacket. Also, if your jacket is worn open, you will see them. And then these two are the pocket pieces. That's the pocket facing, that's the pocket lining and up there on the top tiny tiny yoke piece there. So those are all the pieces. You can see that for the asymmetric pieces I also have a paper with a pin with the name of the pattern piece actually on there so that it's easy for me to grab them when I need them. There's lots of areas in these pattern pieces that need to be stabilized with interfacing so that the zipper doesn't stretch out, the pockets, the neckline, lots of little tiny interfacing areas. I need to cut out strips that are about an inch wide with an interfacing that doesn't stretch. I've got all the pattern pieces that needed to be interfaced. It's some of the areas wrong sides up so you can see them. These are the two facing pieces that will be on the front. They're both different and you can see along that slanted edge that there is a one inch wide strip of interfacing across that edge and across that edge. This is one of the front pieces and I've also interfaced that long edge right there and where the pocket entrance is going to be. This is the pocket facing and you can see that it's got a little corner right there and another little corner there. And I've also put some interfacing on those edges to stabilize them. There won't be any saggy pockets around here. These are the other front pieces. This one's smaller and it will have that extension there that's navy. And both of these edges have also been interfaced. None of this will be visible. My cutting for the one inch could be an, a bit nicer, but I decided not to spend much time on that and just cut them. So you see that, you know, there's a little waviness there, it doesn't really matter. And on this edge, I also have some interfacing there for the pocket entrance. These are the front band pieces, two of them. And the central area also needs to be interfaced because part of the zipper is going to go there as well. I have this leftover for the cowl because after assembling it partially, there is an area inside that will need to be interfaced after a seam has already been done. So I'll just keep this handy. I'm using this leather look jersey just for the cowl piece on the outside. It's only place the jacket is going to have this. And just because I want the cowl to stand out and these pleats to be seen, all the rest on the outside will have the print. It's a big piece, it's cut on the fold and on each of these shorter ends, here, you'll find lines to make three pleats. I basted mine with colorful threads just to make it easier to put together. So these two are white, that means that that's one pleat. These two are yellow, that's the second pleat. And these ones are pink, that's the third pleat. And doing these pleats is super easy. There are other two white threads for this pleat, so I'm just gonna take this line that's on top, the white one, and bring it down to meet this other white one right there. And that's the first pleat right there. So I'm just putting this together, making the pleats go down like this. And I'll put a pin through there. Next is the second pleat, the two yellow lines. I'll bring the top line to meet the bottom one. And then the third pleat are these two pink ones, the top one to meet the bottom one there. And then on the other side, I have the same, same lines, the same colors. So I'll just repeat on that side. The cow has been pleated on both of the short ends like that. And now there is a lining piece that has the same length but is narrower and this will be on the inside of the jacket. So you just need to make sure that the length of this short end of the lining is the same as the cowl. And it is. It's exactly the same length. So I'm just going to do a basting stitch right there to hold these pleats in place, both sides. And then we can put these two pieces together partially. Do a basting stitch along these pleats. The seam allowance has to be super small, smaller than a quarter of an inch. And you just need a regular stitch length, straight stitch, nothing special. I'll just repeat on this other side and baste that together as well. You need to put your main cow piece right sides up. This is my right side, the shiny part. And you need to have the pleats looking up that way. So each of these folds of the pleats needs to be pointing up like that. And then you take your lining piece, which is really long. It's the same length, it's just narrower. And you put these right sides together. This is my wrong side. I have some marks here. And we'll just pin these along the top edge and then sew them at 3 8 seam allowance. 
after doing that straight seam, we'll understitch the seam allowance towards the lining so that the lining doesn't poke out to the outside. After sewing this long seam with 3 8 seam allowance, now we can open this up and this is the lining, this will be touching my skin and this is the one that's going to be seen on the outside so you need to tuck the seam allowance underneath the cow lining right there and sew on the edge to understitch so i'm not going to start right from the edge i'm going to start a little away from that edge because i don't want that understitching to interfere when i have to close this up later and i'm using my blind hem fold with a needle to the left so i can do this really really neatly take the piece that's on your right hand and this one will be open this is the piece that will need to be interfaced later with a strip of interfacing that's an inch wide going over the seam allowance and going over the pleats that's why I've already pressed it there neatly and take the other piece that has your left hand pin it together and we're going to sew that with 3 8 seam allowance and then flip it to the other we fold the seam allowance onto itself hold that on the corner and then flip it so when you flip this to the right side and you have your main looking up at you the one that has your right hand will be open and the one that has your left hand will be the side that's closed. And fuse the interfacing on this side. Here's my strip of interfacing and it will go fused right onto these pleats and all the way down over the seam allowance. And now this side will be ready for later because it will be part of the zipper installation on one of the sides. These are the main pieces that you see right sides up. This is one of the front pieces. That's the other front piece. What you see there is the side seam there and the side seam over here and these are the central areas and I have put the bands on top because now we need to sew them together, right sides together, but just on one of the ends. The band is slightly shorter so you do need to stretch the bottom band to fit the main piece that's underneath. Put pins on the sides and in the center and I'll just stretch to match and it's a 3 8 seam allowance here. So that's one done. You can see why you had to interface this bottom of the band because it will be part of the zipper construction later and you want this to not stretch so you don't end up with wavy zippers. I've got the back band on top of the back pattern piece and I've divided those in four put pins and I'm just stretching the band as I go to match what's underneath not stretching the main back piece that's underneath of course. At this stage in the instructions you'll find that you need to take your front bottom panel extension facing and that's the one that has two little rectangles on the top as you can see there I'm pointing with arrows. With this piece you need to take the top edge and the bottom edge they're very short little areas and you need to fold them towards the wrong side and stitch them with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So just fold that under and do a little straight stitch there to keep that inside. This will be part of the way these facings are finished on the inside so that they're neat before we actually put the whole thing together. In the tutorial you'll find something similar done to the front top panel facing that I'm pointing at with an arrow here. This piece only has one rectangle on that slanted edge to make it different from the other one. But why not do it now? <laughs> Let's take that short little edge on the top fold it towards the wrong side and top stitch that down with a quarter of an inch. We will be leaving that wider edge at the bottom row. That edge does not need to be folded under and top stitch. So it's just a little short one on the top. Two of these pieces here. One is labeled front bottom panel extension, this one. This will actually be sewn on later to one of the front pieces that is smaller than the other and that one is the front bottom panel extension facing. Now what the pattern says is that we need to cut these rectangles off. These were just here to help us identify the difference with another pattern piece that just had one of these rectangles and I'm just going to trim these rectangles away. I'm going to put these right sides together and we have an edge that's interfaced that edge that's not the one we want to sew together now it's this edge right here the one that doesn't have interfacing i'm going to use a straight stitch for this one this area is not an area that needs to stretch and that's why i'm not using a shallow zigzag for it i've also got my quarter inch presser foot to help me with accuracy taking the zipper in your hand like this with the right sides up you're going to fold this at a 45 degree angle on the top like that and i'll fold the other side also so at 45 degree angle like this. I've got the zipper with the right sides up. I wrote an R for right and an L for left. From the bottom you need to mark three inches up from the bottom and make a little line on your zipper. I'm gonna try and make a thin one as thin as I can so that it can be accurate. Okay what we have on the table here is one of the front pieces. It's called the front bottom panel and what we have here are the two pieces we just sewed together on that seam there. So these two will become the front piece and in the middle of 
that seam that's slanted, that's where half of the zipper tape is going to go. This is a seam allowance that unites this piece from the front to the band. What we need to do to this bottom band is fold it the wrong sides together by a quarter of an inch right there. I'll just put a little pin there, hold it there. And then remember we had to make a mark on the zipper. Now this is when we're going to sandwich the zipper in between this area and we need to separate it at this point and just keep the right side of the zipper with us now. We can put the left side and just leave it separately. So let's just take this apart. We're going to put the zipper right sides together with the garment. So we're going to flip this like that. You were supposed to mark from here three inches up and that's the mark there. And this mark is supposed to align with the seam right there. This is the important one that has to align. So just make that align right there. Bring this up. Remember we've pinned the bottom up by a quarter of an inch and we're going to bring this over to meet that seam. What we have here on this side is the seam allowance from uniting these two pieces going down. And here we have that bit that we folded under. The zipper tape are pointing that way towards the side seam and this should reach almost the top right there. In a little while we're going to be sewing a little yoke piece there so there will be a seam allowance here so I definitely don't want the top of these zipper teeth to be all the way up to the top so I'm keeping it about 3 8 of an inch down from there. Now at this stage we're not meant to pin the whole zipper tape. At this stage we should have this part pinned and just the top aligning up there. What we do now is take this front bottom panel extension and flip it, put it right on top, right sides together. So these two pieces are right sides together with the zipper tape sandwiched in between. These pieces will meet on the top, go all the way down up to here. But this should meet that seam allowance right there. They should all meet right there at the bottom. So now I love this because the tutorial says strongly advising that we need to hand baste this. So that's what I'm going to do at the sewing machine before sewing this side of the zipper tape. Okay, I've done all the hand basting to put all these layers together. We can tell that the right sides of the zipper are touching the right side of the garment because we have the pull here touching there and the wrong side of the zipper facing up. So that's what you need. We've already sandwiched the zipper in there. Seam allowance at the back is pointing down. Everything matches. This is why it's so important to have the interfacing on these areas because it's really stable. This knit fabric is not going to stretch along where you're going to sew the zipper. Edge of the presser foot is going to go against the zipper teeth there. I'll be touching that. At some point here, the pull might annoy me, so I might have to stop, get the zipper pull out of the way and start again because it's really bulky under there. Just align the edge of that zipper, press the foot to the edge of the teeth. At the bottom, there's always this plastic bit that's really hard to sew, at least for me. Okay, this is where this is and it's really going to annoy me. I'll see if I can just pull this up and get the pull out of the way. Push it down. Okay, I was able to push it down. This bottom bit here had a lot of layers. You can see the seam allowance going down there. This piece reaches that same seam allowance right there. And then remember we had sewn these two pieces together. These two pieces were sewn together before. And one of them was slightly shorter because we'd already folded up and sewn by a quarter of an inch on the bottom. And on the top over here, on the front bottom panel extension facing. This fold won't affect how you sew the zip at all. So it won't affect that. But when you look at it like this, you can see the quarter of an inch seam allowance that was folded from the band and that quarter of an inch seam allowance that was folded up there. And when you flip this, you'll see the zipper tape is sandwiched between all these layers here. And on the back, this fold is going to cover that area there. And then this has already been folded and it will meet that one. And that's how it's going to look super neat here on the inside later on. At the top, you can see how this is going to look. This is the right side of the zipper and that's why we had folded that edge towards the wrong side. And this will complete this seam that will then have a little yoke on the top right there. This is what we have just sewn. And here we have the front top panel with the front top panel facing and the left zipper tape is right there. That's what needs to be assembled. But before we do that side of the zipper, we are just going to complete these pieces by sewing the yokes. One will go on the top right there where the zipper tape finishes on the top. But on this one, it will just go right there. There's no zipper right there. That's 
how that looks. The zipper tape reaches almost to the top there. I prefer it that way. It's pretty straightforward on the other side because there's no zipper. I've searched this seam, no drama there, and now I'm doing this one. And as I got to the part where the zipper tape, I'm actually hand cranking over this area because it got really bulky. I felt I could damage my machine there. So now I've gotten over that bulky area, I just keep going. And I'm sewing and I look at the blade to make sure I'm not trimming away anything there. This is the other facing piece, the front top panel facing. This one just has one of these rectangles on the side, the other ones had two. And the top there has been sewn under by a quarter of an inch. So this little rectangle needs to be trimmed away also because it was only there to make it different from the other facing piece. This long edge of the facing needs to be finished now with a serger. So you have one side that is interfaced and the other side that hasn't been interfaced. This is the one that needs to be surged at this point. This is the front top panel. This is the side of the front that is wider and larger. And that is the facing that goes with it, the front top panel facing. You only need to sew the top edge on this facing piece, just the top edge by a quarter of an inch. That's what that is right there. At the bottom, it's just raw. This front top panel has the band attached already from a previous stage. You can see the seam right there. Both of these are facing right sides up. And now you bring this one, flip it over, put it right sides together. And you are going to align this raw edge over here with that raw edge and sew it with 3 8 seam allowance. Okay, that was sewn and you might think this is looking very strange because the facing doesn't go all the way up to the top. But it doesn't need to be all the way up to the top because we have the cowl piece that will also be part of the zipper on the left zipper. So we need to take our cowl piece. We have prepared this before. Now we need to attach the cow piece partially onto this neckline. So we have this prepared. I'm looking at this from the wrong sides up. You can see this is the open area of the cow. This other edge has been closed and flipped right sides out already. That's not the side that you need. You need the open side, the one that has a bit of interfacing and you need the main cow piece where you see the pleats. This is going to align now right sides together here on this neckline, but only up to that yoke seam right there. And you'll find a notch there on your cow piece that will match that yoke seam, like that, that area. This goes pinned along this curved edge of the neckline, just up to that yoke seam right there. You can see I've got my pin matching that notch there, and we'll sew that with 3 8 seam allowance, just a straight stitch. Okay, after sewing this top edge here that united the front piece to the cow main piece partially up to the yoke seam, we have our cow piece extending here. This is the main one with the pleats. This is the lining. And now we need to take the lining and pin it along the edge of the facing right there. And sew this one also at 3 8 seam allowance. Here on the top edge of the facing, you can see that this is an area that was folded in by a quarter of an inch and top stitched down at a much earlier stage. look now when you fold the top edge of the cow here the one that has a seam on the top and you align this you'll see that the seam allowances meet right there and this is where the left zipper tape that we still have dangling by itself is going to be sandwiched in between later then we follow this all the way to the bottom if we match them up and we will see these seam allowances meeting down here at the bottom and then the band is here on this other center front right there. Take our left zipper, you can see the L on it right there. This is the bottom, the top has already been folded back, that was done previously. And we were going to put this zipper tape right sides together. So where I mark the L, that's the right side of the zipper and I'm going to flip it like that and place it on this one, right sides together. The zipper teeth will be pointing towards the side seam and you have the edge of the zipper tape against the raw edge right there. And this mark right there that you have there will match that seam right there that you have from the band. This will fold over itself like this and you have the zipper tape in between there. These two seams will match and then you're just going to align this all the way up keeping the zipper tape in the middle of these two all the way up to the top and the top of the zipper will be right at the top of the cowl seam up to there. I've taken my time to pin everything in place. These seams, the one from the lining and the one from the main cowl, need to be going down when you sew the zipper, so towards this area, 
towards the front pieces. This is how the bottom of this side looks. Seam allowance is going down. There's quite a few layers here because the main cow piece has the pleats, so you will find layers here. Here's my other pin and the bulk of the seam allowance going this way, going down. flip this to the other side and this is how it's going to look. This is the seam that was matching that line I had on the zipper tape. When this goes together with the other side, this seam is going to match the seam of the other side coming through there. Now we can put this together, zip it up and you can see that where the bands start are at the same level and this zips up like this and on one side you're going to get to the top of the cowl neckline here and on the other side you have that yoke right there. Here is my beautiful jacket, it's so pretty. You can see that there are three pleats going up like this on this section that has part of the zipper in between the main cowl and the lining. And the other side of the collar is tucked inside and it also has the pleats in there, but that's the one that is tucked underneath. So it goes all the way around, super cozy. I am hot right now, but when it's cold, I will appreciate this. And it's such a beautiful collar. I have the leather look jersey just on the main cowl so that it's visible and it makes a difference and you can see it because it's so pretty I wanted you to see it I didn't want to do it with this print and you can see that the zipper reaches below this little yoke right there and it goes diagonal all the way down and it's within the hemband as well you can see that there's a little cutout section in the front where you put your hand in and you have your pocket so nice. The back is simple, it's just cut on the fold. There's no detail on the back at all. Every single fun thing is all on the front. When you unzip it, you'll see that you have this edge that has the cowl without the zipper here on the smaller part of the front. And there's an extension there that I made in navy. That's where the zipper is enclosed in between. And on this side, you have a facing. And this facing is actually sewn onto the zipper tape right there. It's very neat inside. It's not going to be flapping around anywhere. At the bottom, I finished these ends of the facing by hand on that little section. And then the hemband is just folded under and sewn on like you do any regular hemband. And on this other side is where you have the zipper that is in between the cowl pieces. And in this side, you just have a facing that's like that. It's just loose, it's surged on one end and it's finished like that, sewn on the bottom. And you can see that the pocket bags are sewn into the hemband so they don't move anywhere. And that piece is also sewn on. I have some top stitching on the right side that you might not see, but it's a pocket that doesn't move anywhere. So you can see that from the inside, it looks relatively simple. I set my sleeves on the round. I used my serger for the side seams and the sleeve seams, just the simple seams, you know quarter of an inch seam allowance there and this back edge of the neckline is finished with binding that you make from the same fabric the last steps of the sewing that have you finished the inside of the collar and the hemband it's very straightforward to look at the instructions and get it done you'll be able to do it for sure i promise you and i'm so happy i'm so proud of something like this that's so different underneath this You'll see it with my Metro pull-on jeans. They go perfectly. I love all the blue tones in the outfit. So let's have a look. Here's a far away look at my Alba jacket. It's a really nice print in an athletic knit. I have got the size 16 tall file and I've got it paired in this opportunity with my Metro pull-on jeans. Super comfy jeans, love the denim paired to this print for a more casual look. So this is a longer jacket. It goes underneath my bottom and I'll show you all the details up close. There is a nice amount of space at the bust and the waist quite roomy here are the inseam pockets but then it comes closer to the body at the hips this is the tall length and it goes right under my bottom it is a longer jacket i think it's a really interesting jacket super fun to put together there's a side seam there and the pockets go right there they are very very easy to put together here's a look at the top this collar it's so pretty i have a leather look jersey here for contrast i thought it would just stand out more because of the print I've chosen. I've also got the yokes in a contrast blue. Zipper goes right up to there. Shoulder fit is really good. Long sleeves with a cuff. There are two layers to this collar. The outer layer has some pleats. 
but I'll just move the camera lower so you can see this up close but it's so so pretty I could also just open the zipper a little bit and wear it like this so it looks even more asymmetric I love that <laughs> here's a good look at the collar you can see there are a few pleats here on this area this overlaps over this side and the zipper reaches to this little yoke that we have there and when you open this up you can either wear this just like that let this hang open there are also pleats on the inside of this collar that's tucked in it's a super comfy style it feels really really cozy and comfy covers your neck but look how roomy it is you have plenty of space in there to put other garments nothing's going to constrict you at the neck i've chosen to do the outer layer of the collar that has the pleats with this little look jersey and the inside is a blue athletic knit same type and weight as this one it's just that this is a solid same one i've used here on the yoke i love making this just being really concentrated during the project to get all these pattern pieces correctly very asymmetric i always love that in sewing and i love the zipper that goes diagonally this collar is so pretty longer jacket which is nice easy to sew pockets which is great long sleeves really enjoyed making this I think you do need some time to prepare to sew something like this and I'd like to share that I take every single project that I make with a really slow sort of mindset you think I might sew fast because I, I put out so many videos but each of them takes me a long time especially with patterns like this you know it might take a whole day for me to print the pattern assemble just really study the pieces look at the instructions choose fabrics you know these are projects that if you slow down you'll be less worried about it that you can't do it you can do it it's just seam by seam by seam there's no special technique here that requires a lot of skill it's just patience and dedication and i hope this type of video helps you see how a garment can come together and how it is possible to do it and for sure the only way to start advancing in your sewing skills is to take risks and to start doing new things because you can be making t-shirts for 10 years but you're not growing so find patterns that have new things, have new techniques that might challenge you every now and then. And slowly but surely you go advancing in your journey and you have much more freedom to make whatever you want. You have much more variety in the types of projects that you feel capable of doing. And the only way to do that is to actually do them. So that's why I take my time to film and show you because I really want to bring these projects to you and make them accessible and just give you that little bit of a boost and handhold from all my heart to you <laughs> that's all for now i hope you didn't find this one too overwhelming i know i really enjoyed it and i'm gonna really enjoy wearing it it's just so pretty and so different unique and i love projects like this that's all for now i'll see you again very soon with more sewing bye